Hey guys, Joshua Peterson with Peterson Electric here today. I um, wanted to show you um, something we did for some pond pump. Um, this is the backyard, a very nice, but very, very nice home here. And um, it's got its own little courtyard and they had this whole pond area redone, rocks, everything. It used to drain itself and pump itself down there, but now they're draining it into a tank and they have a pond pump down here. Um, I've worked for her in the past just by changing out a couple of outlets and light fixtures, things like that, nothing major. I did not wire this home. Um, so anyways, they brought us in. We worked for them for a couple of years, just on small things. And the concern was over the phone I got three weeks ago on a Friday night is, hey, the pond pumps are, are popping the circuit. Um, they did have two of them in the past. Now they're down to one big one. Um, and it was only two years old, the whole system. So what I did over the phone, just because I knew them um, and I was trying to help her out, is I told her to isolate that pond pump, pull it out, clean it out with the hose, take it inside, uh, fill up your tub, put down a rubber mat, a garden mat or something so you don't scratch it. Put the pond pump in, which is a, it's a large pump. Um, Try to see here it is. Put this in the tub, and then at that point, the water will suck in and push out. So, but then they just take this and plug this in to the GFCI in the bathroom. The GFCI in the bathroom does travel, but in this brand new house. A lot of these outlets, uh, the bathrooms were separated except for maybe two bathrooms because there's five. So I didn't have to worry about a lo another load with a bunch of lights from a house in the 1950s tied together. Um, this house was built, like I said, two years ago, so we knew this was a good test. So she plugged it in and she said um, it was popping that circuit. That tells us right then and there that this pump was starting to go bad we isolated it away from the area and we did the same test GFCI 20 amp circuit and see what was going on bottom line there shouldn't be this amount of rust within two years or 18 months for that kind of hard water you know I can't prove by the date on the pump but my thought is is what if the guy had originally put in a used pump he thought was good and it was but you know I can't figure that out but the bottom line is we need a new pump and the other thing they did is they ran the extension cord under the grass, put it down, and then it fed in that same location. So you can't use an extension cord more than 30 to 60 to 90 days, typically for construction purposes or Christmas lights, things like that. Um, I've seen that many times landscapers put in just a, 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 an EB pipe, pipe, Schedule 20, that you use for underground sprinklers, one inch, inch and a quarter, put that head through, pull it through, use the extension cord there and they think they're good. You know, it's good for a while until rabbits chew it or um, the connections they put in, they get water in these fittings. So you have to put in an in-use cover like this. It's an extra hard duty and it seals it. And then you pull out this sleeve down here and just put it to the side and then they'll put the cord in and then while in use it can stay shut. Uh, do be careful, it's a great wasp nest, definitely um, a great condominium for them I should say. So normally I don't like any kind of landscaper or guys that work for them that aren't electricians, you know, licensed to do any underground because I'm pretty particular about it. But you know they ran a two inch PVC schedule 40 which is like that size, that's good for, that's good for three out going to a house or two out. Um, definitely could probably pull, pull, you know, parallel runs of four out. But anyways, they put a single one in there in two inch and then I had to figure out how to adapt that. And um, I wanted to just put in a one inch PVC. That would have been plenty. Uh, Cause then you can get a one inch bell box and adapt right away. Or you can go to an inch and a quarter if you feel you need a little more space for some low voltage number 10 or eight gauge coming through. Typically though, with your low voltage, that's 12 volt DC for your, for your lighting outside, LED or halogen, you're gonna want two conduits separated anyways because it's a different voltage and different potential 
and you don't want to induce that voltage onto the other line affecting it and the fact that you know this pumps running 12 amps all the time and this runs all year round they don't even winterize this so keep that in mind to run two separate raceways uh, it doesn't hurt for your low voltage because it's a fatter wire lower voltage put that an inch and a quarter and then put this in an inch, one inch and you should be just fine um, you could do a three quarter as well but it's only 60 foot so let me show you what I did um, and I know a lot of um, um, inspectors would not pass this so I don't like to disclose too much but this went to a two inch PVC um, coupling then we found in the, in the plumbing section of Home Depot um, it's gonna be an adapter for two inch and it slips in there's no thread but then this portion is threaded to fit a three-quarter inch MA for that male adapter and then it comes up with a piece of schedule 40 here or schedule 80 there just about an inch and then an, an MA right here as well and then you screw your box on I can't say that's the best way to do it um, but I don't live in a world where I always get to come out and tell them how I want it done. Sometimes I get called out after all the grass is in and all the flagstone is in. And then they decide to tell me, here's what you get to work with. Now, if they put in, you know, this kind of pipe here and they want me to sleeve that all the way through, you know, you could if you did a UF cable and it's going to be 120 volts. But if you're getting in a 240 volt system, and you need four wires going out to that area it's not going to work for a shed or typically a hot tub um, you want to be in that direct burial with a schedule uh, 40 underground and an 80 above ground um, so let me show you what i did I, I made that work over here i got all that to fit and sealed it with pvc glue and i did it also with some silicone um, on this side, this is what I had to work with. <laughs> they gave me a two inch stub right here. Again, when you stub out, you need to be above grade, not below grade. But I did run this with a UF 12-2 cable. So that's all that's in there. So it's still rated for sunlight, water, and pretty much dirt. But there is no, you know, ag aggressive rocks that are gonna pinch that UF cable because it's all in a two inch PVC. When you glue your fittings together, you want to make sure you're measuring that out when you're going from your bell end, female, to your male. So you, you, you may want to come out here and measure that across so you know how much to push it in. If you push it in halfway and glue it, one, you're eventually going to get water in there and debris and mud over time. Two, when you shove in your fish tape, you're going to get stuck if you shove it this way. You always want to shove it with the bell in going that direction down. Because if I shoved it this way and it wasn't in all the way, that fish tape's going to get stuck, especially in a 2 inch PVC for using a 12 2 UF. Bottom line, you know, I, I wasn't going to make them rip it out. You guys are probably looking at the video and go, why didn't he just go to here and put an extension ring? That's a good point. Problem is, is this outlet jumps over to that corner, to the basement, to the front of the yard. I mean, this outlet jumps. That outlet was completely dedicated for the courtyard, which was originally part of one of the pumps up here. So what we decided to do is come in at the back side of the job, unfortunately, and they didn't want to retrench anything because it was already done. So what we told them we would do, we would find a way to adapt it from two inch to three quarter, put in a junction box, bend it, and then bring it up. You're not gonna find those kind of fittings there at Home Depot. I used a heat box. If you know what that is, just Google it. You'll find it, it's typically a three to $400 box if you get a four footer, it goes up to a two inch size. And we just heated this up, prefabbed our own PVC schedule 40 here, put it in the MAs on both sides, did that same thing on the other side, adapting it, coming from here and going up. Okay, I always seal with caulking around my top fittings, even around my top of my screw in rings right here, especially if there's a GFCI. It's just a J box. We later could put it into an outlet. They will bury this, and we will have the shrubs grow up over time, and it'll cover this. I did use just a little bit of Grace paint to match, so I made these fittings look a little bit more blended. Um, and that's a mini strap. That mini strap gives it a quarter inch off the back of the wall, so any snow that gets in here, it doesn't start to eat at the bottom of the stucco. It actually melt and just come straight down.
The other thing is that when we bent this, we just did a quick 90 with an offset, or a kick, excuse me, and we went right in here to an extension off of the box that was already in there, allowing us to three quarter into the bottom of this box. And then over here, here's what you have to pay attention to. Um, we labeled our circuit. We always like to do that. Circuit 27. This is a WRTR rated GFCI. GFCI outlet at 120 volt. It does not have to be AFCI'd unless, of course, this, this receptacle was sharing um, inside a livable area in 21012 then this would have to be AFCI'd at the beginning of the circuit. But it only feeds to here, so it's only GFCI'd coming down. So um, with this in-use cover, we'll probably won't even use this outlet, so just go ahead and keep these little um, sleeves inside of here just so it doesn't build up as a wasp nest. And then you'll shut that and you're good to go. But again, adapting a two inch to a three quarter to go out 60 foot plus another 15 feet here was close to 80 feet from A to B. And we got them a dedicated circuit uh, again, I'd rather have been over there, but I know this outlet was dedicated by tracing it, so we came over here. So if you can, you know, trace out your circuits and the next time have that trench, you could have a little bit more inconspicuous. Um, but this is kind of where this stubbed out from the bottom of the crawl space down there. So anyways, guys, thanks for joining us. Hopefully you got a few good hints out of this, and let me know your thoughts. Have